If you accept the fact that two triangles are congruent, then you must also accept the fact that CPCTC must also apply too. But what is CPCTC besides a geometry teacher's way of knowing for chewing gum? Well, it stands for corresponding parts, so that's the CP, of congruent triangles. I'm highlighting the letters here, are congruent. So what that means is that if you have two things that are the same, every part of those two parts must also be the same as well. Let's look at a quick example to apply CPCTC. So let's say we had two triangles where I said these two triangles are congruent. I'm going to ask you what are three pairs of corresponding congruent parts? Corresponding means they're in the same position in the two triangles. Congruent because we accept the fact that these two must be congruent. So let's pick out an angle C. If I look at angle C, the congruent corresponding part must be angle F. And how did I know that? Well, there's two ways. One, I could look at A and B and say A has one mark, B has two marks, D has one mark, E has two marks. So the only angle in this triangle that doesn't have a congruence mark is F. I could also look at this order right here. That order is very specific. It says if angle C in this triangle is congruent to something in another triangle, it has to be angle F because C is the third letter and F is the third letter. It has for two more pairs. Let's talk about this side BC. So I'm going to say line segment BC is congruent to its corresponding segment in the other triangle, which is EF. And last, we could look at this line segment AC, its corresponding line segment in the other triangle. If I just look at these letters, A is the first letter, C is the last letter. So looking at this one, D is the first, F is the last. I could also look at the drawing to verify that's true. When do we use CPCTC? Most often in proofs. So if you want to take a look at how to apply it, check out the episode on proofs.